Okay, so today we've got Dr. Yawande. Um, as far as I know, she started a dental journey in 2012, um, and she's been a bit of a trailblazer since then. <laughs> she, she was the 2019 Entrepreneurial Student of the Year, 2020 um, FGDP UK Student of the Year, and um, helping many students getting into dental school. Um, and I believe now you're a DTC um, mentor as well. So that's dental training consultants. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really getting involved. And um, you also have an eyebrow business. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're, we're really going to get a lot from this video. Um, so stay tuned as Dr. Yawande um, shares with us her dental journey. first question I like to ask is why did you want to become a dentist? A big question. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be honest, dentistry wasn't something that I knew I wanted to do since the day I was born. Like a lot of people say, oh, I've always wanted to be this. Like yeah. I literally had no idea. I went through so many phases where I think the first career I thought I wanted to be was a singer because I really enjoyed singing in my like choir and stuff and then I quickly realized that okay it's not as easy <laughs> as it is um and I thought you know I really enjoy science I wanted to be in a field where I could be around people and help people in some way as cheesy as it may sound like I genuinely wanted to help yeah. um so I just thought you know what let me try and explore see what there is I first off thought I wanted to do medicine then I quickly realised that, okay, maybe not. <laughs> um, what made you think maybe not? I don't know. I just thought, I felt like I was just really squeamish. But then dentistry has a lot of squeamish parts. But I felt like with medicine, you have that thing where your patient can die and pass away. And I can get, I am quite emotional. <laughs> so I don't think no, if I'd be able to deal with that. And I think when I came across dentistry, I was more sold to that. Um, so work experience was the main thing that really sort of solidified it. Um, work experience in itself was really tough to find, yeah. but I was grateful when I eventually got a place. Um, and yeah, just watching the dentist and just, I just could see myself doing it. And that's yeah. what really just said, you know what, I'm going to dedicate now all my energy into my dental application and making it happen. Did, did you have anybody that was in dentistry or... Um... Yeah, did any friends or family friends introduce you to dentistry? No, so literally no dentist in my family, no one like that at all. I was like the only one. Even when I said to my mom, oh yeah, I wanted to dentist, she was like, oh, okay, that's different, but go for it. My mom's so supportive. Um, it's something that wasn't really too, like people weren't really familiar with that career in my family, yeah. but obviously people know it's a good career. So I just worked towards it. And yeah, I did have anyone to ask or look up to I just so, so what do you do at that point you don't have anybody to offer you a template yeah. how do you go about finding out the information you need to know how do you even know that you need work experience how, how does that happen yeah so my university were quite supportive so they had like a not university sorry sixth form um I went to Dartford Grammar and they were very like supportive they had a little group for medics and dentists yeah. and they told us what we needed to do so they had like personal statement help um, and stuff like that and obviously the people in my um i think it was really helpful having people in my year group that wanted to do dentistry as well so yeah. we formed our own little like group and i'd always message them like i remember like with kira and i was like oh how's your application going yeah. and all just confide in one another so it's really helpful when you have people in your school that are wanting to apply as well if you're the only one and you don't have anyone in your family then it gets really tough, I think. And how did you um, end up, you know, selecting your options for dental school? And then, you know, yeah. how, how, how did you settle on, on Plymouth? And is it Plymouth or is it Peninsula? This is it's a Plymouth University as a whole, but yes. Peninsula has its own separate bit, <laughs> medicine and dentistry. Okay. So that's why into the dental school but Plymouth University. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, this is a very long story in itself but I'll, I'll try and summarise. Okay 
so I applied to dentistry the first time. Um, I think the first time round, I applied to Bristol, Manchester, Liverpool, and was it Kings? I think Kings. So I applied to those four. Um, and I got, luckily, I got interviews and offers from Manchester and Liverpool. Okay. So and why did you apply to those four? So I think at first I had this mindset, I want to apply to like Russell Group University. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back there it's just very like things that are just irrelevant if it's medicine and dentistry no one cares what kind of uni it is but I just thought oh yeah people say Ross Group Uni is a good let me put these ones down okay. so I just put those down and I just heard quite good things about them and mm. I think we always used to look on the Guardian leagues table and all of that now, that's so, so good that you mentioned that because a lot, a lot of um, people that I talk to that want to get into dental school are saying like, what's the best university yeah. Um, you, you there know. is like, dentist, everything dentistry dentistry the GDC General Dental Council they give us stuff that we need to learn for every dental school and you all graduate with the same degree so yeah. I feel like when when you're applying for dental I know people will say oh what's the best one and but at the end of the day you're going to come out of the same degree so I think when you're picking universities look on the requirements and see if you have that um, and speak to other people that are in the uni as well if, if I could go back, I think I'd message. Obviously, there's so many dental accounts now, yeah. students. I would probably, like, message students, like, to see, oh, how do you find your university? Yeah. And it can give you a bit of an insight. So um, your interviews, you said you got yeah. some, some interviews? Yeah, so I got an offer. For, I'm sorry, interviews. I started to. So I got an interview from um, Manchester and Liverpool. Um, yeah, so I went there. I actually had to travel on my own. I know a lot of people, their parents drive them. My parents are very supportive, but I am quite an independent person and I don't like to sort of stress them out too much. I kind of get things done myself. So I remember taking a coach to Leeds, staying in like some hostel. Oh, no, Leeds is my second one, but <laughs> that's the second time I applied. But every time I went to an interview, I'd always go by myself and I'd see all these people, like their parents and stuff like that. And I'd just be like, oh, but I just thought, you know what? I'm here, I'm focused. Let me get the job done by myself. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was a good experience. <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. Um, I actually have my own YouTube channel where I spoke about like my interview and stuff. If you guys want to have a look, but yeah, as a how do you find that? Is, is that your one day dental? How do you find the YouTube page? You one day dental. So okay. you just type it in and you'll find that. Where I have like different videos for each bit. But um, yeah, as a whole, it was. Um, it was a good experience. I ended up getting two offers, so from Manchester and Liverpool, the ones that I had interviews with. And then I had to do my exams, and this is when things went a bit wrong. Okay. <laughs> so um, I had a biology, uh, so I've done the international baccalaureate, it's important to mention that. So I didn't do A-level, so I've done the IB, where you have seven subjects. So biology, chemistry, psychology, maths, English, and German and then theory of knowledge so there's quite a lot and then you do your exams all right at the end so I remember doing my biology exam and there was this I at this point had done so many past papers I've revised everything the lot so I thought you know what it's gonna be great yeah well I love biology I went over a positive mindset and then I finished the question the questions and then time was up and then the, I remember right at the end, the vigilator came over, she picked up my paper, she turned it around, and right at the back, there was a 22 mark question that I just uh... didn't And I was just like, because all the past papers I'd done, it didn't have things right at the back, but it was just a stupid mistake. And I literally, I think I, was, I literally burst out into tears. Like, you know, exams are silent. You could just hear me just weep. I was like, can I, can I have it back? I can answer the question. They're like, sorry, time's up. And it's annoying because it was like a question about the heart or something, which I could have answered and I could have like done really well. So um, I literally just, at that point, I saw my offers fly out the window. I was like, there's no way I'm going to get the grades now. Like I've literally missed out a 22 mark question and I was really upset. Um, uh, and then obviously the day came and I found that I was actually 1% off <laughs> after missing wow. out a whole 22 mark question. So even if I had just written like a small paragraph, <laughs> I would have probably got the grade um but I just had to take it on the chin and 
I remember that part, I was really, really upset. Like my friends, my family, they know that I really wanted to get in and I had really high hopes. And I think that whole summer was really depressing because you saw all your friends going to uni and you were just in this predicament where you didn't know what was going to happen. I actually yeah. sent it off for a remark. Um, I had to pay like £250 for a remark. And obviously, like, I don't come from a family of money, so £250 was expensive. And only for the remark to come back and still be 1% off, I was thinking, really, is this, also, is this the case? So at this point, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Yeah. And luckily I'd put, well, not, I say luckily, but I put as my backup, because you can put other things, I put um, Biomed at Warwick. Yeah. And I was just thinking, uh, Warwick it is a really good university, but then Biomed, I don't really want to do it. Uh, I was stuck. And just speaking to my friends, my family, my boyfriend, and they just all told me, you want to do dentistry, do it. Like, swallow your pride. I think pride was yeah. a really something that was getting in my way because I was so used to just being that achiever and getting grades I was thinking, oh no I'm gonna have to go back to the lower year retake oh my gosh but then I just had to I had to look at it and just I prayed as well like obviously I faith is something really important to me and I just thought you know what this might be something that is all part of God's plan at that point I didn't know but yeah. I just thought okay everyone's saying just try again my family was supportive yeah um and I just okay, let me try again. Let me swallow my pride and go try again. So, so you retook the year. I retook the whole year. Yeah. Okay. So I have to. So actually... Every exam you have to redo every no, exam. No, no. So the exam that was one percent off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't even only biology, chemistry as well. One percent off. I was like, what is my life? Like, <laughs> why is this happening to me? So I had to do both of them again. Go back to the year below. And to be fair, it wasn't only me. So there was another guy in my year who is now a dentist as well, Kieran. Wow. Both had to go back and do it together. So I felt like I had a friend. <laughs> yeah. Both went so back. Did that, did that change the options in terms of unis that you could apply to second time round? Yeah, so um, it narrowed it down. So I think I could only apply again to Manchester, Sheffield, Peninsula. So I didn't apply to them the first time, but Peninsula, they accept us retakes. <laughs> And um, what was the last one? I think it was Liverpool again. I can't remember. Yeah. But um, yeah, so there's certain universities that um, only accept retakes. So if you are someone that didn't get it the first time, do have a look. Yeah. Because not everybody accepts it. Did you get um, the same number of interviews this, the second time around? No. <laughs> it's almost like it was meant to be. I just got one interview from Peninsula and one offer. Wow. So, so the first time you got two interviews. Yeah. Was it, was it two or three? Two, two. Two, and then the second time was just the one interview. The one. Any idea what, what that might have been? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I had a similar personal statement, but I obviously added the bit where I've retaken and stuff, so I'm not too sure. Maybe they, I don't know. But I'm glad. I'm glad Peninsula <laughs> gave me a chance, because if they didn't, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't know. How was that interview at Peninsula? Oh, uh, Honestly, like, I had never even been down to the Southwest or really heard much about Plymouth, so it was a bit strange. Again, I got a coach all the way down there. It took, like, what, five hours to get there. Um, I had actually, there was a guy in my year who studied dentistry at Peninsula the year before, so mm. I reached out to him, um, and he helped me out uh, preparing for the interview, and it was a panel interview, so... I went in, really nervous. Um, obviously, this is my only interview at this point, so I'm thinking, damn, if I mess this up, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so I went in, tried to compose myself, and yeah, obviously they just asked why dentistry, and just tell us a bit. They were just asking different questions. Just try to remain positive and give the answers that I prepared. And yeah, yeah they gave me an offer. So I was really, really happy. I remember that day, I. <laughs> I literally got that email because you get an email that says something has changed on your UCAS and yeah. you don't know what has changed. So I think as soon as I got that, like, you know, when your heart just, you literally come out of your own body, like, oh my God, something has changed. And then when I saw an offer, I was so happy. Like, I was like, yeah. And, oh, I was Do you remember happy. who the first person was you told? 
Um, oh gosh, probably my boyfriend Michael. <laughs> he, yeah. he had to endure the trauma with me. <laughs> so yeah, he was there all the way. And then I told my parents and everyone was really happy. Yeah. I finally got into dental school. <laughs> so tell us about Peninsula then. What's it like being a student in Peninsula? Well, um, Peninsula, I feel like it's one of the more modern university um, dental schools. Obviously, they used to be graduate, uh, but now they're for everyone. So it was quite interesting because I think we were like the second or third cohort to be part of the undergraduate. Um, so I feel like as a whole, they really try and just make sure that we we're getting the best. And I really liked it there. Like it was really good um, for someone who didn't really expect much from Plymouth. It went. It really surprised me, and I had such an amazing time there. Was um, it your first time ever being in Plymouth? Yeah, apart from my interview, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was my first time being there. And I met some great people that are also from London and we formed a really close friendship group from first year and just saw each other through right up until the very end. So it was it was really good. I really enjoyed Peninsula. Gosh. So what, 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 were, what were your weeks like um, if you yeah. just looked through year one to year five, you know? So, Year one and year two, they consisted of lectures mainly. Obviously, you're learning about um, a lot about the science behind dentistry, so all the different bacteria, um, H and E stain, all that, all that, all the science part of dentistry. You learn the bones in the whole body. Like people think you're just learning about teeth. It's not just about teeth. You have to know about the whole body. Like we learn about all the different medical conditions, everything. Yeah. So first and second year is just, you're going to lectures basically every day a week. It's quite a demanding course. Um, you don't get like days off as much as other students will in their first and second year. But I think if you're applying for dentistry, you know what you've signed up for. So that yeah. was quite, that was expected. Um, and then when we get to third year, that's when it starts getting a bit more clinical. Oh, I should mention that in first year, specifically in Finance, we were able to start seeing patients. So I, we started taking, it was mainly just medical history. So halfway through first year, we'd already seen our first patient taking medical histories. Um, and then second year, I think I, that's when I'd done like my first filling, which was exciting. Yeah. Then third year is when it took a real shift where it was a bit more clinical. And we went to Exeter once a week um, because with Peninsula, they have different, schools like um clinics around the southwest so we went to exeter once a week i saw some patients there and then fourth year you go to truro so that's in cornwall okay so you live by the beach um and you spend the whole year there and that was a really interesting year because obviously i'd never been to cornwall let alone live there uh it was really quiet uh, it was quite peaceful to be honest and I think that was the year I made a lot of dentures because <laughs> quite a lot of elderly people live in there. But it was really nice because I think we were in clinic almost like four days a week and one day just um, lectures and stuff. And then so you just lived in two different places or three different places during your time? In the yeah, so you, don't, you only live in uh, Cornwall for fourth year. The rest, you travel. Okay. So the, the school organises like a coach to take everyone to Exeter. So you have to wake up at like 6, 7 a.m. to get on the coach. If you miss that coach, you've missed clinic for the day. There, was, there were times where I was like, oh, <laughs> I need to make it to clinic. Uh, but yeah, then final year, we're back in Plymouth and they have a clinic dedicated to final years. Yeah. And yeah, it's a bit sad, actually, because I was really enjoying final year. That was a year where I was doing the most dentistry and COVID just cut it short. I was really upset because I had formed really good relationships with some of my patients and yeah. I was super excited to finish off their treatment. But Give yeah. us some highlights. What are some highlights, some embarrassing moments or just things that stick out during dental school? So I know um, for me, because um, we used to work as clinical partners in UCLan. And um, yeah. but when, my, when I was a dentist, my clinical partner would be the nurse. When I was the nurse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have clinical partners. And at one well. time, we actually let a patient um, with the wax denture almost leave the building. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It wasn't the final acrylic denture yet. It was the wax denture, which was probably starting to melt. 
by the time yeah. they'll get into the entrance. So have you got any standout moment? Um, I really enjoyed time with my clinical partners. I think my first year clinical partner, uh, Prab, we were doing, I think, you know, when we had to practice doing LA, so local mm-hmm. anesthetic. So obviously we'd never given anyone an injection in our life. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just looking at each other like, <laughs> can you do the job can you do the job <laughs> so we just had to put our trust in each other and i just remember the first time he just done and i was just had like such a swollen face but he done it well he, he hit the spot and yeah. i was numb me too as well i done it right so that was good and my final year with a partner francis we got on really well and i remember every time we done endo it was almost like it was so scary because endo sorry is root canal treatment and when you're taking that final x-ray for, yeah. uh, to see how it's gone, we'll just look at each other. The patient will be in the chair. <laughs> we'll almost be like, we'll just, in our mental, we'll be like, good luck, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> just gone down to work in length. And as, she, as she's processing it, I'll just be looking at her like, is it good? Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> and then when you find out that oh, it's to work in length, it's like, oh, okay, fine. But yeah, there were times where... It was really nerve wracking, especially when you have a patient in front of you and you just have to try and keep your cool. Yeah. And I think when patients ask you, like, oh, so how many times have you done this before? <laughs> and in your head, you're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I've done it twice on a doll, <laughs> but obviously you can't say that. It's just like, yeah, yeah. You have to like really believe in yourself, <laughs> yeah. even though you haven't had that much experience, but you have to make it, I guess, make it, you are, you, you did part, we do pass our um, competency. So we practice on, on like, dolls and stuff like yeah. phantom head sorry um so if we can do it on the phantom head we just have to transfer those skills to the patient so yeah i'll be like yeah i can do it i've, I've done it before <laughs> um so yeah if, if somebody was to be starting dental school in september and they're saying you know what is dental school like how would you summarize it how would you what advice would you give to them um dental school dental school is great um obviously it's not all sunshine and rainbows you're gonna have some hard times um i think be prepared for failure um because i feel like everybody who has got into dentistry you're clearly all high achievers and you're all used to getting good grades but when you get to a place where everybody's like that you're not going to be first all the time you're not going to be even in the top 20 or 30 do you know what i mean um so there's been situations where i was so close to like fading exams in dental school oh, i'd be so upset like oh my gosh like what is going on here um and yeah you have to work hard you really do you really do because you really do that's all i'm gonna say you have to work hard um there's gonna be times people tell you to come out and mm. even though you want to you know that you've got stuff to be doing and there are people in your year group where they're naturally good they can go out and they will still manage to do amazingly on the exam but yeah. there are people that you have to work really hard to get that to that point and I was one of them yeah. <laughs> so I feel um, you have to really just know your strengths know your weaknesses and don't be too upset if things do go wrong because mm. you learn every failure do you think there's a tendency to want to compare yourself in dental school to others? Yeah, 100%. Like, especially, you don't want to, but it's just natural. You want to see how you are yeah. compared to other people. And if, you, if you're if you not as great, you're going to be, you're obviously going to feel a bit deflated. So there were times where I'd compare myself to people and think, oh, okay, they're doing that. Why, why can't I do that? Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, you're all different and you all have your different areas where you shine. Mm. So I think don't compare too much because at the end of the day, some people, they have different ways of revising. They cannot revise and do well. Some people don't. So mm. if you compare yourself, you're just, you might be defeated. Like I remember the quote people always say, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, fish will spend its whole life thinking it's stupid. Yeah. So one has different strengths and weaknesses so don't compare and um somebody might be thinking that they they have to fit in when they get to dental school and fit in with everybody else should they want to fit in um and how does somebody actually get to form relationships with other dental students in in dental school um i think for me it was just quite natural i just found people i got on with um 
and we just got on. Um, I think you, you get instantly drawn to people. Um, I try and be friendly to everyone, but obviously there are people that you do get on a bit more with. Yeah. And yeah, just spend some time with them. And I think everyone has their own way of making friends. Yeah. Um, I can't say this is the way to do it, but you'll find people. I think every, like the most people on my course had friends that they could speak to. So you'll find your own little group. All right. How, how big was each cohort in, in Peninsula? So all together in our year group, there's about 58 people. So yeah. quite small. Yeah. Quite small. It's quite everyone knew each other. They yeah. did split the year into two halves, um, but you still knew each other. And they mixed it up. When we get to the third year, you, you get to change. Uh, but I think it's quite good having a small year group. Yeah. Um, I know other dental schools have like 200, 300, or like 100 people in their year. And you yeah. don't speak to everyone. But it's quite nice when you have a small year group and everyone knows each other 